Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, whoever, wherever. Hi, Steve. Hello. Uh, uh, in this world taking part for today's uh, CBS 16 fourth session. Welcome, very welcome to you all. And uh, you, we, we, for today's session, dedicated for a community specific, you know, indigenous knowledge, local knowledge. Each and every community has their own indigenous knowledge, local knowledge. And uh, they inherit those knowledges to survive, to fight, whatever the challenges in front of them. We'll share with you some practices, the way we listen community and the way uh, the community's voice can be converted into action. And very surprisingly today, we'll also add a new dimension is the poetry. So all will take you throughout the session. Uh, please, uh, this is an intimate session. I hope you all will join, contribute. Our chat box is remain open. I uh, will remain open for the end uh, till end of the session. Please don't hesitate to raise your question or any comments. A dedicated team working uh, to respond to your question query is. So now uh, I'm sharing some logistics announcement. I'm sure all of you are quite aware. And let's uh, have a look. This uh, CBS 16. Uh, started today and uh, we'll continue till tomorrow. Then, next slide. Uh, the housekeeping, uh, the, you know, uh, IIED is recording the meeting and make, uh, may make parts of, the, of it available on our website, IIED website, at a later date. And this is to share with you. And we have taken security precaution to discourage uninvited participants from joining the meeting and posting inappropriate comments or other contents. If you notice any such content, please notify the host via the chat functions and they will remove any offending participants from the meeting. Please do not share the link to join this meeting on social media. Uninvited participants via social media are the number one source of Zoom bombing activity. For the best meeting experience, please close all non-essential applications on your device, particularly messaging applications such as Skype or Teams. Uh, you know the sound uh, system, you know, initially your microphone will be muted by the host during the breakout session later in the meeting, you will be able to unmute your mic to speak by clicking on the icon. And you can share your webcam video if you choose. If you experience connections problem, you should try turning your video off. And here we can, you can see the participants icon will open a panel on the right of the screen where you can interact with the host using the icons, all the buttons at the buttons. And then chat will open a panel where you can enter your comments and questions or request technical support will respond to as many as, as times allows. And uh, this is uh, the share screen option is dis disabled for participants in this meeting. The record function for participants is also disabled. And finally, the reactions enables you to share immediate feedback with the presenter with like and dislike to icons. Here, uh, you can update your name to let us know who you are and your organization. Go to the participants, then select more and rename. How local today's session, how local knowledge rooted in cultural heritage enhances locally led adaptation and nature-based solution. 
uh, the very specific three objectives are identify how various indigenous local practices can be blended with the new knowledge to strengthen adaptation and resilience. Highlight the importance of learning local stories, culture, and art in the climate adaptation discourse. And at the same time, uh, last but not least, we'll hear from you, share your experience in the chat box. Apa John Kurachan? I'm there. Okay. okay, fine, great. And now let me welcome Aruna Khan, founder and executive director of Friendship, uh, to open today's session. Aruna Khan. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy to be with, uh, with all of you today. And uh, so I would like to thank IIED and the Friendship team for hosting this event at the CBA platform. Thank you for the participation of IGES, the Luxembourg Review, and Professor Harshit Latra. Thank you and welcome. So let's start with the title. So there is local knowledge rooted in cultural heritage, which enhances the LLA and nature-based solutions. We have here all the key words, or let's say many of the key words, which today is very, very known as being one, some of the tools for mitigation, adaptation, loss and damage in the climate sector or in the climate world. Now how does it interlink this fact of the local knowledge, cultural heritage, locally led adaptation and nature-based solutions? As with many things in today's world, the interlink is very deep, very subtle, and without which it is not possible for, for us to move into the world of tomorrow keeping climate as a central theme in all our actions and work. Along with climate, the deep, deep status of human rights and the dignity of people must also be always considered. Because without this, no action can be sustainable. No action can be one of permanence. The local knowledge is central. And over the last few years, COVID has certainly proven that. There have been a lot of money available. There have been scientific data available. There have been so much of activism all over the world. But who are the ones who have, at, at the end, been able to save their own lives, have been able to take their lives in their own hand and have taken the step for survival? It is the local people with their indigenous knowledge. And today, so often, whilst doing very big and global, taking into account global and big issues, we neglect this. We neglect this because we lack humility, because we have this strain of arrogance which so often imbues our work and leads us to totally ignore what is already in front of us. Of course, this is not enough. Today's world is built with tools is built with the, with the technology, is built with scientific knowledge and understanding, with huge ac academic inputs. It is with all this together that we need to imbue the local knowledge and ensure that that is remain forward. And today, I'm also very, very proud to introduce into the CBA <laughs> and into the, into the forum, into the platform, the interaction of culture, literature, art. Culture, you know, friendship has been doing cultural preservation since 20 years now, because culture is so innate at the, at the central core of a person's identity and dignity. And through art, through poems, through culture and literature, one can touch the heart. And one touches the heart a lot of actions can take place, which no amount of data and no amount of push from the top or from the bottom can do. It needs to touch our hearts. And this can come through breaking barriers, not working in silos of any, nor financial, nor the activism, nor academic, nor adaptive system implementation, 
nor leaving behind the art and culture and the inherent knowledge of the people whom we are trying to address. I really would like to thank you once again, and I would really like to thank the intervention of, of, of the people who have joined us today. And uh, I'm also delighted that uh, our uh, activities have been the, the locally led champion award of the DCA, the Global Climate <laughs> Adaptation Solutions, and also our mango forest has been ranked amongst the best 20 best practices of landscape restoration in Asia Pacific out of 150 projects by the IUCN and FAO. And we really hope that this integration of culture, of adaptation solution, the local voices would be, will be there at the COP with, with, with the friendship interventions and the friendship uh, sessions that we will see. And uh, thank you very much for being there with us today. And thank you for this opportunity of co-hosting this event. Thank you. Thank you, Runa Khan. Uh, Runa Khan is the founder and executive director of Friendship. She started this journey 20 years back in Bangladesh and uh, working at a 100% climate impacted. Uh, now I would request to invite Mr. Binay Raj, Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, uh, to share his presentation on the connections between indigenous knowledge and the Paris Agreement IPCC report and LLA, Mr. Binoy. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kazi. And my name is Binay Ratsivakoti. I am from Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. Today, I'm very happy to be a co-host of this session and uh, to present some of our work along with my colleague, uh, Professor Harsit from IIT Roorkee, India. So, uh, so now I, I will have a two presentation, but uh, first this time and later after some time. So first I would like to basically set a light on this importance of indigenous, traditional indigenous and local knowledge system for uh, locally led adaptation. So please allow me to share my screen. Can you see it? Okay, thank you. So, um, uh, so once again, uh, uh, my title is about the indigenous traditional and local knowledge system for locally led climate action. So I will be using TLK in short because it's difficult to pronounce whole line all the time. So, uh, so first uh, let's start with the concept of what is this uh, traditional indigenous and local knowledge system. So this is based on the IPCC and the UNESCO glossary. And uh, it's a, a TLK is mainly about understanding skills and philosophies developed by societies. And they usually form the fundamental part of day-to-day -day decision making. And, it, and uh, recently there has been a huge uh, interest that these are also relevant for the climate change action. So that means uh, we can say this uh, TLK not just about uh, some uh, visible technologies or what we have been seeing in climate change adaptation intervention. It can be anything that is being practiced that is in the memory and that's uh, not visible at all. So, so why we are talking TLK for locally led adaptation? So first reason is whenever there is a climate change impact or any external impact, these are the basic coping choice for the local community, communities because that's what the knowledge system they have, or that's the tool they have. And they are also uh, considered very appropriate because they are location specific. So they are legitimate and effective choice. And when we use this kind of traditional knowledge system, there is no steep learning curve as against to adaptation intervention that has been brought from somewhere else. And when we go to the planning, adaptation planning, it's often hard to plan at the local level because we in start with some new concept of climate change, adaptation. So we will confuse the local people from the beginning. So when we start this kind of uh, uh, traditional knowledge system as a basis to plan climate action or adaptation, or locally led adaptation, then it uh, looks like a logical entry point. And because they are, 
are the result of centuries of uh, experimentation and adaptation. So they are considered proven solution. And most of this uh, traditional knowledge system are also natural based solution. So if we see like uh, when I say there has been a, little, a lot of attention, so you can see like the three major uh, policy decisions like Paris Agreement, the Sendai Framework on Disaster Risk Reduction and post 2020 Biodiversity Framework Draft. All these uh, have mentioned this use uh, stress on the use of uh, this uh, traditional and local and indigenous knowledge system. And basically they stress on the integration of this knowledge system with the modern science and technology. So that means, uh, um, and the main reason is because there are multiple benefits when we do this, uh, you do this way. Uh, as I explained earlier, if we go to this major assessment report, for example, this recent IPCC uh, assessment report six on working group two, there are 18 chapters, plus five or six cross-cutting chapter. Each chapter mentioned about this uh, indigenous and uh, uh, TLK. TLK. And, uh, and one of the part of this is like, uh, there are evidences so that when we do this kind of, uh, use this kind of TLK, the risk of maladaptation are very low because they are based on ro local reality. And, uh, and this is also one way that uh, we can bring in uh, this uh, use of bring a kind of create citizen science approach, what we say, how we, we can bring this uh, community of the scientists, um, uh, local people to work together. Uh, so this provides a very relevant uh, uh, topic or the uh, issue. So, and you can see also this uh, uh, IBES that's about the biodiversity. And it also says a quarter of global land area is traditionally managed by this indigenous community. So that means a lot of knowledge system existing there are, uh, are based on this uh, indigenous knowledge system or I often interchange ILK or TLK. So it's both are same. And, uh, and uh, when we come to this um, uh, one report on high map that I have been working about this in uh, Hindu Kush region, so it also says that uh, this uh, TLK forms a basis of mountain community coping practices. And this helps to build up resilience to disaster and an important role in disaster risk reduction. And combining this uh, TLK with external expertise is vital for the res resilience. So these are some of the uh, uh, key points from the measure assessment report and also uh, policy priorities. Actually, I be I became very selective, but if you happen to see any kind of recent decision, you will not miss this topic. So that means this the importance of TLK is highly, uh, very much increasing these days. But uh, there are also, so one option, one thing that we know is that they are important and we need to promote it. So this, things are fine, but there are also a lot of uh, challenges. So we can't say that uh, only traditional knowledge are sufficient for adaptation or not, or locally led adaptation. So one reason is because these knowledge system are very diverse and distributed by location, culture, people, language, and practices. So there is like a practical difficulty, how we can identify, uh, validate their utility at this moment, document, apply, and upscale. So there are a long way to go. And we don't have any tools, methods, or capacity to design, especially adaptation programs uh, based on TLK. And because of that, there is there also kind of reluctance to invest on TLK-based solution. And uh, uh, aside from these things, there is one another important thing is they are themselves vulnerable to climate change impact. With uh, continuing increasing uh, uh, climate change impact, this uh, TLK system may not work and wear down and reach to the limit of adaptation. So that is another, and another point is uh, because of that, and also there is a lack of incentive to transfer this knowledge from knowledge system from older generation to use. So that means we are also in a critical stage that we might uh, ultimately lose all this uh, knowledge system. So that means because of that, I mean, uh, if we, one challenge is that we want to make adaptation very relevant, uh, locally based and uh, effective. 
And another way we need to also uh, running with the time uh, time that uh, we have to also recognize and uh, uh, use this kind of knowledge system for effective adaptation, cost effective adaptation. So this is uh, kind of my uh, short presentation about this concept. So uh, later I will also explain, discuss about the communication aspect of this uh, traditional knowledge system. So over to you, Kazi. Thank you. Uh, now it's my turn to share a friendship experience and I'm sharing my slide. Can you see? Can you see this? Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. I'm sure. Okay. Okay. Well, so welcoming go how local knowledge rooted in cultural heritage enhance locally led adaptation, nature based solution, and friendship experiences. Uh, the I'm sure you all are aware Bangladesh is highly vulnerable to climate induced multiple hazards, but people with their indigenous and local knowledge fight to survive and adaptation. Normal flood is beneficial to people's lives and the economic of Bangladesh, but frequency increasing day by day. So frequent incidents of flood and river erosion render local people res resilient. The urgency of new knowledge coupled with local knowledge is vital. And this is the aerial view of Chor. Chor is a Bangla word, it's a sandbar island. And uh, this is really, I'm sure you can realize that they are isolated from the rest of the world, even from mainstream of the same country. And the people live here, it seems like excluded people. So our story will lead to how really we are reaching those people, how we extract the indigenous local knowledge to take those people for adaptation. Uh, just a glimpse of idea, the situation of Chor. According to the National Chor Alliance, about 10 million people in Bangladesh live in on 109 coastal and river chores, exposed to a vagaries of annual floods. These chor cover around 10% of land in 32 of the 64 districts of Bangladesh. And the Center for Environmental and Geographical Information Service has been monitoring erosion caused by three major rivers in Bangladesh, the Ganges, Brahmaputra, and Meghna. Every year, about 10,000 people lost their homes and livelihoods to river erosion. And according, and as I mentioned, uh, these uh, this statistics we received from Bangladesh Water Development Board and if you see the, you know, the intensity and frequency and uh, the situation, the way deteriorating in 2019 in Brahmaputra, 725 hectares of land showered. And in Ganges, 1240 hectares land lost. In 2020 for Brahmaputra increase, 1120 hectares land disappeared. For Ganges, 1265 hectares land. So you can realize the people live on those chore, on those land, they are homeless, they are displaced. And friendship started its journey for those people who were climate impacted, both in northern part of the country and coastal areas. And they they are disaster impacted, climate affected, and at the same time, they are poor people and friendship journey to ensure the equal opportunity for child dwellers. And at the same time, educate knowledge we gain the way the, this, the fight with the climate changes. And we uh, explore different options to make sure better life, better livelihood. 
Given the changing flooding and climate pattern of Chor land, Friendship took an initiative on identifying appropriate adaptive solution. And Friendship employ a participatory and inclusive approach to strengthen their capacity and take their journey for a better life. This is one example. We have participatory planning in several, uh, close to 20 tools we use. This is the social mapping. Their social mapping tools help us, you know, uh, to identify specifically where the vulnerable areas, what is the reason behind. And throughout this journey, there are several tools can help us for hazard identification, risk identification, assessment of risk, vulnerability assessment, capacity assessment and wealth ranking, mobilization of local resources. These are all help people uh, to realize, internalize their issues, their situation, and so that they can take part in planning. See another example, this is another, we call seasonal calendar. We draw seasonal calendar for different hazard, different crop, different livelihood. And at the same time, they can realize conflicting. The red mark, you can see these are, you know, the different hazard, the, the cyclone, flood, drought, and green are, these are actually different uh, crop, uh, livelihood options. And the blue are crops. So when people can realize the conflicting the flood time and the cropping time, so they can decide what need to be done and they need to shift their, their, their concept. So based on those things, we, we very, to make them very specific and focused, we do Venn diagram and Venn diagram helps them which hazards is very close, bigger, and which we need to address immediately. Here we identified the flood, which is pink so that we help people to think about how, what are the issues related to flood, like river erosion, inundation, and how can we handle this considering their particular community. And then we know that to save from the flood, people uh, raise their plane. This is a very uh, indigenous local knowledge. There, there are several uh, hundred, you know, you, know, you know, in the whole community in the Asia and Pacific, and people used to raise their plane to prevent their uh, home state from the flood water and erosion. But if you see the right hand side, it can't sustain because of, you know, home state compound can be difficult during floods and side slopes are sometimes difficult to climb. So, so many uh, critical issues we identified through this approach, but concept is very good. The, but challenges are uh, to make sure is durability, and at the same time, making sure during the flood time, access to hygiene, sanitation is a problem. Children can't continue the education, health service can't offer their services, and, and there are many other issues need to think about. But uh, uh, the raising plane, the concept which we have taken forward. And you see, we realize the major concern is height of the flood water rate of rise, timing, and duration. And this task of protecting the plinth from wave erosion is difficult because the plinth are constructed from the easily erodible local soils. And these are the issues we, we considered in our new planning. I mean, uh, new knowledge we blended with local knowledge. So we identified technical solution to protect the plinth from wave erosion involve measures so absorb the emergence energy of waves and plinth actually made by local sand art and this is the initial design of the plinth let's see the next and the this is the internal uh, uh, strength of the plinth the oval shape the water comes from north and that can't break the plinth and so that you know the the strength of the water while breaking, the plinth can protect people on its own. And this plinth uh, is a great solution for the displaced people, at the same time, a shelter for the people who are flood affected with their belongings and cattle. And that is the uh, bird's eye view of the plinth, a safe space for flood affected people, as I mentioned, with belongings and cattle and homes for displaced people. 
in the whole world people are now struggling for the displaced people and major concern but these people remain in the same community they were belong to same community but their home lost they lost everything because of erosion but their knowledge their skills capacity are as it is so that we wanted to make sure they remain in the community they can contribute not only for them as a for rest of the community and you see the evolution the 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 concept of local knowledge you know the raising plant remained there then we redesigned we adjusted with the requirements and we designed the new plant and this is the uh, shelter for the people who are displaced and if you see the flood time you will find hundreds of people 200 people come uh, you know are, are taking shelter here and we make sure the sufficient number of lot latrine water options and there are community space so that people can get uh, you know uh, organized gathering discussion and at the same time we have a school to continue education in emergency uh, we have the vegetable gardening option solar support we introduced recently and the pond in between for for fisheries and uh, if you see during flood time 82 to 150 families can take shelter and they can't uh, they always take their cattle with them poultry so you know this is a big big uh, solution for them people in those vulnerable areas we considered the height of the plane the above the maximum flood level like 3.5 meter so that plane themselves would not get submerged uh, then next uh, I'm happy to share with you that uh, GCA, Global Center on Adaptation, selected this plane out of 20 uh, for the Adaptation Champion Awards and uh, hope for the best. Let's keeping our finger crossed to, to, to be part of these awards. And uh, we are happy to, but the recognition is if you, those who are taking part in this session, please share with people. And we, we, we would love to share our knowledge, technology, ideas, for the people in crisis. And keeping this spirit in mind, uh, there are many people they can't raise their uh, plane of their home state. And I know uh, there are financial constraints, different challenges, but cattle are in bad shape during the flood time. So we applied the concept for cattle shed. So many uh, communities now replicating this cattle shed concept, saving hundreds of thousands of cattle. And uh, there are another example of local knowledge, how really we utilize for uh, protecting communities. This is the uh, protected you know, cropland from sand filling and erosion. The bamboo bundle is being used by local to stop river erosion, flood water waves, and sand filling on croplands. And these are many other, and there is another called, it's called Dolkolbi, is the scientific name is Ipomera cornea. Uh, this is uh, a, a local variety of vegetation so that that can prevent erosion. Uh, drowning is a big problem. Big, uh, each year, over 14,000 children in Bangladesh die due to drowning, very silent killing. And uh, we identified uh, there are some local knowledge door barrier can prevent children, you know, to be in the uh, 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 house, you know, because mothers are busy with their cooking and anything, so children are very unattended. And some anklets also we introduce, reintroduce is the own patient in Bangladesh to look at children. Thank you. Now we'll take you for a video uh, for three minutes, two and uh, two minutes to thirteen second, please. Imagine an island of silt, one kilometer by one kilometer. No permanent infrastructure is possible here. Yet, over 2,000 climate migrants are trying to live and survive day by day on this very island. Hey, 
এখন মনে করেন যে বন্যারও কোনো ঠিক নাই আমাদেরও কোনো ঠিক নাই একটা ফসল যে ফালাম ফসল ফালা কোনো শান্তি পাই না ওই ফসল ফালাই বন্যা এসে হে ফসল ধুয়া নিয়ে যায় Bangladesh is the land of a thousand rivers. Floods have always visited this land year after year because of the country's geographical and climatic conditions. Yet the present scenario is totally different. Floods are no longer predictable for it happens 3, 4, even 5 times a year. This unpredictability in time and period of flooding causes huge loss to the economy and lives of people. Aun amar bari gor sob bhange chilo eshe bhange jara jao por আমি এখানে একটু আশ্রয় পেয়েছি এই আশ্রয় নিয়ে আমি এখানে ছেলে পেয়ে নিয়ে আর কি জোড়া করা সংসার সংসার করে খাইতেছি এদি আমাদের আশ্রয় আল্লাহ দিস ইজ এ রেজড প্ল্যান্ট ইউ মেট পিপল হিয়ার অল ওয়ার ডিসপ্লেসড বিকজ অফ রিভার ইরোশন সি উই ডিজাইন দ্য প্ল্যান্ট ইন এ ওয়ে when water comes from north because of oval shaped plinth the flow of water breaks and that can't break the plinth 30 family can live here for longer period we have built 18 plinths but a lot more are needed for today thanks to these plinths many of the migrants have shelters for themselves and their livestock but much more food is needed for the months of flood Together with the community we had to find other new locally led nature based solutions. Thank you. Uh I I would remind uh again you know that is uh if you have any questions any points to share with us you know please use chat box our colleagues are there and they will respond immediately. and now again i request uh, professor harshit uh, sosan i i i believe he uh, managed to join with us binay professor so is the uh, floor uh, you know i would request professor Har- harshit sosan lakra uh, to join with us now with his presentation okay, i'm sure binaya uh, will will also uh, thank you me. thank you mr kazi for a very interesting presentation and really good and congratulations for being selected by the gca so let just allow me for some time to uh, share the presentation okay okay so can you see the slide yes Okay uh, uh let me introduce uh professor Harsi uh, so uh, I think you see mentioned that she is from the very remote location so I think we are not uh, hearing your voice uh professor Harsi so much can we all of us can we uh, close our video uh, our video just to make sure that uh we can easier for us hello professor harshit uh obinay can you hear me now yes yes, yes we, we can, can hear you now yeah uh binay just confirm me yeah just confirm me if you are able to hear me all right all right uh, i'm somehow not able to start my video which i think should be fine uh, is that okay binaya yeah yeah sure 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 you can do binaya you want to I'm share from, from yes you are audible. audible okay fine fine okay thank you thank you so much binaya and thank you uh, the um, organizers here and it was wonderful to hear kazi as well as can then also for me so uh, i'm very happy and delighted Now we have a sound problem i think we should uh try to to fix that 
to your side because uh, the sound is breaking up. Yes, your sound is uh, very uh, like a thing, like not and uh, really uh, like I, I I'm an architect and a planner, and then I have uh, initiated and look, started looking into this area as well. So I'm Maybe uh, she can be reached uh, yeah, uh, through the telephone, and perhaps Binaya can. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, just a moment. Okay. I, I, will, I will contact her by phone. And Thank if you. She... Uh, yeah, maybe in the meantime, uh, Binaya, you can switch to your other presentation, and she can then uh, start again her presentation. Okay, that's also um, fine. Yeah. Uh, Professor Harsit, uh, in the meantime, I will start with my presentation. And uh, after my presentation, you can start again. So that uh, hoping that by that time, uh, we will have you, we can hear you. Or all of, another alternative option oh, is- Binaya, uh, can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Can you speak a little bit? Hello, hello. I think it's all right. I should be fine. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, let me share my presentation and then uh, after my presentation, okay. We, okay. we will be. Yeah, talking here. Hello. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello. Okay, just, okay, just let me share. Okay. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, welcome once again. Uh, can you hear me and see the slide? Okay. Yes. Thank you. So thank you, Kaji, uh, for your earlier presentation. So here I'm going to uh, bring in the communication aspect of indigenous traditional and local knowledge system. So unlike uh, what Kaji said, we are not uh, actually doing that kind of intervention yet but we are in a process of compiling this uh, existing traditional knowledge system and trying to find a way how we can communicate this. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, we focus our work in this uh, whole Hindu Kush Himalayan region. And the main uh, reason we selected this uh, area is it's a challenging area, including, I mean, the area that uh, Kaji show Bangladesh is also a part of it. And uh, a lot of uh, issues are like there are, um, the main reason this uh, locally led adaptation and TLK are relevant in this um, um, Hindu Kush region is because of their mountain specificities. So one is their uh, inaccessible remoteness. It's usually difficult to reach the place. There is a limited mobility and there's uh, always an issue of access. So it doesn't matter it's a far location, but it is also even it's a nearby area, but reaching there is sometimes very difficult. So because of that, intervention are always not so easy. And these reasons are very fragile, uh, as you, as Kazi also thought, like uh, there's no permanent structure. And people are highly marginalized people there, uh, especially subsistence farming. But at the same time, there is a huge uh, diversity and heterogeneity, which makes it also, in one way it's uh, good, but other way it's difficult because you can't uh, apply a uniform solution. And, but this area has a niche or comparative advantage. So that can be capitalized. And the most important is these areas, people have developed their own human adaptation mechanism under which uh, this uh, traditional and knowledge, uh, uh, local knowledge system also uh, falls. Uh, the emergence of this kind of knowledge system is also one of the result of uh, human adaptive mechanisms. So these are some of the traditional knowledge system, like one in Pakistan where the water from glacier is 
uh, people use uh, divert the water for irrigation. There are like trad use of traditional medicine, for example, in Myanmar. And these are the raised houses uh, in the floodplain area in Nepal. And also one example from a guide from one professor about this floating vegetation. So these are all this uh, traditional knowledge system. And there are also some other uh, similar type of traditional knowledge system. So for like this uh, irrigation canal, water supply irrigation canal, uh, this is like flood prevention, like a wooden structure. And so these kind of uh, practices are there. And what is important aspect is that, uh, as I mentioned, traditional knowledge are uh, locally appropriate, proven solution and cost effective. Um, and also they are there because of other lack of other coping mechanism. And as I explained, Hindu Kush region is a hot spot of, because it's one of the hot spot of climate change. And they, this, uh, this region is uh, home to numerous traditional knowledge system. And the point is how, like what Kazi has mentioned, the issue is how we are going to communicate about this achievements effectiveness and how this uh, system could be recognized. Local efforts can be recognized uh, at the national and international level. And what are the communication, how to communicate the needs and priorities of the local uh, uh, communities. So these are some of the aspects we consider. And what we are doing is we are trying to create a, a mechanism interface for science, media, and community, where in media plays a very important role. And science means we are working with universities to uh, do ground research. And then, uh, and, uh, and we are also discussing about how we integrate this uh, traditional knowledge system into local planning. And above that, we are working with a community radios, network of community radio. We have this AMARC Asia Pacific Association of Community Radios. So what we are going to do is using the collected information, we are preparing a radio programs to communicate about this uh, traditional knowledge system. So uh, I would like to next just give you one example. So this is like uh, what we do is first, uh, we try to understand the uh, local climate risk from the people. So for example, we reach in one of the uh, Eastern part of Nepal, uh, very close to the Kathmandu capital. So the problem is the spring water source. These are in the mountainous area. These are drying because of this uh, changing rainfall pattern. And also more recently because of the earthquake in 2015, it disrupted the flow of this natural spring. And as a result of that, uh, women and imp uh, children are, are having a huge burden to carry the water. For example, we meet one uh, school girl. Uh, she said, uh, she, uh, while going to the school, she carried this uh, uh, water jar. And then when she comes, she bring water. So such kind of like, uh, sometimes she has to go late to the school just because she has to carry water. And in terms of uh, this has huge uh, physical, economic, emotional impact. Above that, uh, economic impact also there. For example, people are relying on uh, livestock, but when once you can't uh, provide uh, drinking water to livestock, so it's always a problem. So they have to reduce the size, number of those livestock. So it has a huge uh, uh, socioeconomic implication. Then we try to find some kind of like a identify a traditional knowledge system application. So we found that there are some kind of uh, traditional ponds which were created uh, for a long, long time ago and people uh, conserve it because of its multiple benefit. So because of recharge function, because this water recharges from this lake, so the downstream uh, spring uh, will have always continuous flow of water. And when in a dry season, they can use it, animals can use it. So this provides a lot of uh, uh, benefits. And to do that, and they have uh, uh, established a traditional or uh, religious norm, Thank 
We can't hear you anymore. We know you can't hear you, right? You know, we, we can't hear you anymore. Can, can you hear us? I think he has been disconnected. Uh, Professor Harshit, can you can you please try again to uh, to speak so that we can check if your sound is working well? Hello. Yes. Um, is that better now? Uh, not really. Can you can you can you speak a little bit so that we can we can test? All right. No, it's um. Oh, I'm sorry. The sound is very bad. We can't. We can't hear you. Facial um, expression. So I. I hope. Uh, yeah. Am I audible? Uh, this is Harshit here. Harshit? Okay. Harshit? Yes, yes. Um, now a bit better. I'm not in... We can hear, but it's breaking up all the time. So the sound is, is very bad. So I think we should move on to the next slide because uh, we've lost Benaya and, 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 and uh, we can't hear you, uh, Professor Harshit. The sound is breaking up. We can, I mean, it's too bad. So I think we 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 should move on to the next part. Uh, sure. Okay. okay. Uh, great. Uh, now I will. Just... Now I will take you a very different session. First time in CBA, sixteen. First time in CBA in last 16 years, uh, uh, we are introducing a new dimension, the poetry. You know, uh, the poetry has a very powerful spirit uh, to take people uh, to the to the destination for their for their for their struggle, and. Uh, in Birmingham Student Climate Change Writing Competition, they mentioned uh, that the hard times are coming when we'll be wanting the voice of writers who can see alternatives to how we live now, can see through our fear stricken society and its obsessive technologies to other way of being, and even imagine real grounds for hope. We'll need writers who can remember freedom, poets, visionaries, realists, and of a larger reality. We believe the literature, and in another uh, uh, quote I, I would like to share with you, the literature has a multiple effect. Ideas spread quickly and more fluidly than PDF reports, charts, and figures. The fuel for change is hope, and literature can provide this. And hope you remember in COP26, during COP26, in Scottish Parliament had a big buzz uh, with a poet, his name is Shezad Doza, and uh, he is with us today with another poet. Uh, I, I, I would like to hand over Shezad Doza from Luxembourg Review of this session taken care by Shezad Doza. Shezad. Hello, everyone. I'll begin with a poem, I think. Um, I originally had a speech, which I was going to go first, but I think it's more important to, to show just what poetry can do to open up hearts and minds. So this is a poem which I had um, written for the University of Glasgow uh, for COP26. It's called No Fresh Soil Left to Plant. Um, can everybody hear me? Is the sound okay? Yes. Yes, Cesar. Let us take 
a moment to look on and see. I remember an old man telling me his gaze obscured, his the unobtrusive horizon and wanting lines between survival this day and perhaps on to the next. The line is an indecipherable one, shallow one day, crops once grew luminescent in a vague semblance of some fertile familiarity, of families being fed, now mitigated by uncertainty of surrendering months. The water rescinds and returns as the line encroaches and disembarks from the same ghat as grave and reprieve. Every wavering season precedes ash lost, delineated across timely distance. The tether demands this other half exercise restraint in excusable refrains. There is that difference. When seasons quiver together in subservience, assortments which once grew in temperate calm repeals any further invitation. Vestiges of any arterial pulse is replaced as veins stretched out as a new collapse in waking lungs and no fresh soil left to plant. Um, so hello everyone, my name is um, Shazar and I am a poet, but also the founder and editor in chief of the Luxembourg Review. So we ask ourselves, why poetry? You know, like what can poetry sort of go ahead and accomplish? Well, since I was a child, I always believed poetry has the power to change the world and give voice to the voiceless. I know this as a truth firsthand because I myself have always looked to poetry as an extension to a voice I was unable to have at such a young age. I had also come across a quote by the great poet P.B. Shelley who said, poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. Although not to be taken literally, of course, uh, there was an unequivocal belief that poets are able to appreciate and channel a deep bond with the age they preside in. And that understanding allows for special connections to form and poetry act, to act as a conduit between the world of the imagination and unseen and oftentimes unaccepted truths and those wishing to enter the space. I have personally been privileged to have seen how poetry is able to immortalize, give voice and help shape policies at a global level. In 2019, the poet and dear friend James Byrne and I set out to give poetry workshops to Rohingya refugees at the Friendship Learning Centers in Cox's Bazaar. From, what, from that, we were able to bring together a book of poems written by the refugees at the camps and larger diaspora from across the world. A deeply marginalized and prosecuted group through poetry, activist, poets from our edited anthology oh, no, no, no. Uh, were, Sorry, able to, were able to play a small role in the prosecution against their oppressors <laughs> by giving their poems act as a testimony of witness with one of the poets being part of the prosecuting team. As addition to this as well, this poem, which I just read out um, was also quoted in the Scottish parliament and um, there is, um, and with that, 
you know, we like the, the, the MSP and I, we were able to come to an understanding of how intricately poetry is able to change and shape hearts and minds. So soon, very soon, we'll be having the first poetry in parliament session in November. And hopefully this idea will find its way into different parliaments from across the world. So perhaps soon poets won't just be the unacknowledged legislators anymore. Bangladesh is a land of a thousand rivers. Every tributary, distributary, meandering channels encompass and relays a unique story, one wrapped in history being soaked and seeped into its very bones. The poetry here is innate, a living art form that is constantly in motion and needs to be told. As the river shifts every season, the poems of the rivers find its way to adapt and evolve. It is a synergetic harmony that can well be applied to so many various approaches. Sometimes solutions to so many global problems can be found after relentless pragmatic approaches. And sometimes it can be as simple as listening to a poem, understanding how it relates to the needs and aspirations of the local people who weave themselves into these words, into the corner, into the core of their being and finding ways to work alongside this inherited, this inherited wisdom. Ways to make lasting change is not always the easiest solution to find. But I believe poetry is one of the mankind's strongest tools in the fight against the oncoming, oncoming climate change. Um, that's one of the reasons why I've always believed in, po in, in poetry and how it can, it's adapted to every geographical location or, around the world. Um, and even with the Luxembourg Review to give voice to so many upcoming emerging writers. I have, I'm very delighted. I will read one more poem and then I will introduce uh, Maria Sledmir, who is from, who's, a, who's an incredible poet and, Katri, uh, and Katriona Sutherland as well. Um, and they will also read their poems to you. And I hope you enjoyed the session. Um, this read. It's called Tremors Unmask a Silted Skin. You say tremors are buried deep under a basilica of ignoramus rock, cornerstone of civilization, icing, taking back murals of water from tenements to green posture. I smoke rings around to undiluted rasps and the stars app years like confetti and the party is a sub-basement, masked, unmasking, lost mother tongues, the microscopic entrails of home in actions, movements, rinse, skin, rinsed, clearer, the silt deepens to ensemble, carry its last vestiges in your soul. I carry the silt as skin and deposited fissures averts grace. Thank you. And I welcome uh, Maria Sladmir. Thank you, Shazal. Um, it's such a delight to be here. So thanks for having me. Um, I'm going to begin by reading some poems from um, my first collection, um, The Lunar Erratum. And this actually came out um, at the exact same time as COP, which maybe wasn't the best decision in some ways, but also very fitting in others. Um, and it was such an intense time. And one of the things that struck me was how um, a local space can be so transformed by other people coming in. Um, and even in the contingent moment of something like a climate conference, what struck me the most was that feeling of having 
um, bodies and cultures in space and sharing that. Um, and that's kind of like part of the poetry of the street, I guess. Um, so I'm just going to read some poems and I'll say a bit more about ecology and poetry generally. Thresholds. There are points that tip, this much oblivious. Collect your sun lamps, acid tears, emergency candy. The rainforest prepares itself for release. I had a breakdown on the phone to my saint. If a tree drops singles, the rainforest desiccates. Coral flakes off its lunar spine and starts to bleach. We live in darkest catastrophe. I scrape at the wax. Bodies are still to come. Bodies are still coming on the line, on the notch in your bed. I had a license to drill and I pulled up terrible orange and heartwood, orange and heartwood, cut my peaks into rings of celestials. Life pushed this back into the sea. Images were clipped to invisible blossom, rising, risen. I carry pieces of forest in the way that I speak to make toast. Remember what we lost before us, glitter and twigs of cancelled walks. Tip, tip, tip. There is an economy of such excess as to starve and do nature better. The problem with indigo. The sky is a textile conglomerate. We bit a hole in the economic donut. At any moment, dreaming element or electrical storm of the movie, all the troposphere sewn to my tongue. Imagine if carbon came as soft serve. One of the ghosts was a polar thought and tasted of lyric. It split down the middle with cream and the earth was inside like the stone of a peach. Felt little buds in the cells of my blood. Exhalations of cloud vines anywhere. I wanted to pass a more decorative energy and I wanted to sleep forever until everything we did was undone as it was milking computer with the moon. Its iris became a rose in your eye and looped back into phantosmia, sequined the duck with notes of underripe banana, bergamot and petrichor, curing diacritics for breakfast, varnish, cash, the last of our futures scented. How to live now without drying the ice after party towards which our bus heaved likeness, tussocks, a snog of lost solarity. I wanted to enter with sincerity, my hundreds and thousands, the M8 bridge to nowhere. With love and solarity for Katie. Careless braiding the fur of a pear, I look for nourishment in water as though it were other, something to be peeled and left beautiful in a state of undress. Have you seen a lime without skin? All of my friends have chemical burns from working in bars. The juice reacts with what sparse light we acquire this north. A rind on the floor is lunar grammar. You could just cut into wax another thought softening feast of it. The hour has a casual tenacity I link to strata. All prior hours stacked freezier, the work of exchange, which happens in wires and clouds. I forget to use soap. The line feels briny. Ocean becoming a perfect sphere, angelic with avatars, loosening new celebrity halos. I say anthropic to alight from the email, shining with several extinctions. Matters of plundered velvet kelp beds we slept in aeons before. I want to roll around the earth again. I fall off my calorific plateau. This specific fruit lacks seed. It stresses a surface. Nothing grows back like the violet hurt of forgetting a paleo exchange in awkward phosphines. What if the pear bled tender and tried to scream would it slit without juice a radium lyric? I could make playlists of this. I could collect the lovely adverts in chorus. Nevertheless, we slant towards sun. It is only the origin story of a special excess which cools without section. Everything falls on line with enzymes until what ceases is more than a rain. The door kind of opened in the air again. I drew bright circles in the sky to find it. So the question of how poetry can help us think ecologically, for me, poetry is a way of attuning to the world's multiplicity. 
language is a kind of interfacing skin capable of picking up sensory phenomena beyond the visual. And I think the visual mode of witnessing is not enough to understand what's happening. Um, poetry is also stored energy, its potential coiled or unfurling. It helps us negotiate the unequal distribution of harm, the vast scale problems of climate crisis within the everyday life as well. It can intervene in the violent boundaries such as subject, object, nature, culture, these kind of binaries which sustain capitalist anthropocenic thinking. In a time of algorithmic governmentality, which limits our thinking, poetry can help us imagine history, futurity, and the present as otherwise, to consider the temporalities and experience of other species, to understand how the elements weather our thoughts. Poetry is about vulnerability, entanglement, desire, and mourning, forming unexpected communities. To me, these are all ecological feelings. I love this quote by Jackie Wang um, from her book, Carceral Capitalism. She's talking about what writing can do within the context of mass incarceration and the prison industrial complex. But those capitalist logics of control, management, and racialized violence are equally relevant to ongoing issues of climate crisis. So Jackie Wang writes, quote, I know that as a poet, it is not my job to win you over with a persuasive argument, but to impart to you a vibrational experience that is capable of awakening the desire of another world. Our bodies are not closed loops. We hold each other and keep each other in time by marching, singing, embracing, breathing. And I think it's that emphasis on breath that is what poetry can do. So thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Um, and next we have Catriona Sutherland. Hiya. Um, so I'm going to read two poems, and they're based on the Scottish like discussion of the environment, but also drawing in other cultures. So I study medicine as well, and um, I think as well as writing a little bit of poetry. And I think it's that these crossovers between say like doctors and poetry, scientific research um, and like art where new patterns of thought are formed that are kind and rooted and people's experiences. So I'm gonna start with a poem called Creature of Habit. Habitual rhythm, pace with me. Well-traced speckled nose in the familiar amber of curtained comfort. Soft pillow dreams, curl in, drati. Uncultured flower of misdiagnosed fungi, so how, myocellum, do you know the edge of giving? Creature of habits, friend of pattern tides, drag in horizon taut suspension. While I walk in campfire darkness to the lot's pebbled depths, we can't gulp this watered bliss with you. Creature of habits, we hate to recare, robbed authenticity as wood grain telling all in its circles of aged memory. Traced clouds of a tiger stripe sky, give up your stripes. The relief of erasure is a leopard. And one more, and this one's called Sandcastles. Trap them against the surface, follow them, orca, in not quite iced fairy tale kinship. We are now royal tales in history, distorted to foam. In seagull cried wolf, the heron's posture dissipates. Beaked untold outline in a pause to digging questions intended to sculpt in carnival? Not for you. Bubbling eyes to gleam, lost slipper footprints path forbade in silver curls, iron ladder of trapped grief. Stonehaven to grandmother cement, protect in, protect in stepping stone path that lifts from surface tension whispers. Tight ropes often lead to arched doorways of easy chaos. Yet we say we are unbalanced into pillow oblivion, friendship of candles. In fire fingers we gleam stories, 
Word of mouth, only shadow puppet politicians grasp reality. Chopped wood stack comfort of winter known warmth. How do puppet players know more than manipular library pretense? Follow through or cut, follow down or cut. This is not your platform to breathe in the green leafed world. In a pond, skaters, lily pad dreams, a new gravity conceived. Orca clenched and chained demand to a past crafted in monolith. Dialect of distance, how were you formed? Words to conjugate are not supposed to connect contours to you idle mountains now frame grief in this valley of poverty. Love thy neighbor, billboard your eyes so we understand, commodify to distance as statistics to miss. Whitewash intended and at your crimes of survival, we pile sand in colonial homes. Tiny hands are miniatures, is it innate to take in tidal echo breathe? The stolen submergence, most to gather foam wide eyes again, drink in quicksand fear. Entrenched below a crucified guilt of gilded towers, bricks of sea blood now lined by the salt of the sea. The closest to the open window lifting up in seeded exhale, light coat, cotton sleeves, trail in the ghost-like movements for the suspended or unowned. Reach back to the other six, limp and unseemed, yes, but fairy tales you know, you know. These whispers, language of white current sea lines, no distance here but a silky's law from an amber home of curtained comfort. Curtain closed exclusivity, red carpet blues creates perfect circle eyes. If we change the windows to souls evicted, the soft wailing drops. Curves to the eroded cliffs of rebounded arrows and lost salt coated scars. Save our sea in shadow puppet call to arms, listen in wide eyed foam belief. The currents whisper gospel history. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, I pass it back to Stefan or Ramdad. No, no, to me. Okay. Wow, uh, we lost our words. You know, you took us in a different world with care, love, affection, spirit, you know. In few words, how can you capture the whole, whole spirit? Thank you so much, Cesar, Maria, and Carolina, uh, Katrina, Katrina. And I, I, we are truly uh, impressed, amazed, moved. And we do believe for now onwards, definitely, Will will be part of our all whole journey to fight climate crisis. Big thanks, appreciation. Please keep continue the spirit, and this is our energy truly. As you mentioned, the poetry is uh, stored energy. True, truly, we 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 will will want you to take with us for the journey, rest of our uh, destination. Thank you. Now we will ask question. And see, there are plenty of uh, uh, comments, appreciation in the chat box. And now I would request the audience, participants, if you have any question, please raise your question. We have a few minutes in hand. I think we may uh, maybe let a few minutes for, for Binaya or maybe- two. If Binaya is still- uh, yes. Last try for Professor Harshit, if the sound is, is better, hopefully, I don't know, we may have a last try. Okay, yes. Thank you, Stephen. I'm oh, actually great, about to... Great. Yeah, I'm back, actually. I listened to the poet. Yeah, it was really very nice uh, to the year, and I really liked it. And this is a kind of new things for me, too. Yes, uh, so for let, all of us. Right. Yes. Uh, so let me just share my final few slides, one or two slides, and then I will conclude and invite uh, Professor Harsit, if he, if she can join. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, just a voice test, like if it's coming. Yeah, it's coming yes. now. 
yes. Already. Just okay. Just let me quickly finish it. Yeah. So I was sure. uh, just uh, hope you remember. I think I'm sorry if some of uh, of uh, participants joined later. I was uh, there to explaining about existing uh, natural pounds, traditional pounds created for a long, long time and its benefits. And uh, next I want to explain about uh, what is happening at the current moment. So we have lakes and wh what is the problem? So we have a water uh, supply problem there and, and, but we also have lakes. So what happened is like, uh, because of this uh, water scarcity, there are a lot of uh, intervention coming from the projects or program or things like that. And in one of the area, what we have found that they have constructed this kind of uh, water storage tank. This idea was to uh, uh, store the water so that uh, communities can access uh, in a secure manner. But uh, and what happened after that is like, uh, because this uh, system was constructed like mostly concrete, the local communities has no fine, no uh, fund or any skills to for its maintenance. So what happened in the current is they are going through acute water scarcity, and that uh, pond, this uh, water tank is not uh, use, it's not 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 so much useful. And this is just one of physical thing. And what another disturbing thing we found was people have become very dependent on external intervention. So we are hearing that uh, they are planning another. Uh, like a lift kind of uh, water supply system. So through the support from other like uh, NGO, INGO. And at the same time, and what we have found that they have lost, because they are introduced with new system, they have lost this uh, traditional pond. So at the location, there used to be a traditional pond. And the guy, uh, the person we asked uh, several times uh, why this happened, and he he's understanding was because this uh, new water supply system was better compared to their previous one, which need uh, continuous repair and some few leakage. And he still thinks that the new system is better. So what we realized that they are underestimating their own uh, uh, traditional knowledge system. So this is like a kind of, we can't say it's a maladaptation because the tank was constructed to supply, uh, to uh, deal with the acute water shortages. But in the long term, if we see if such kind of systems are brought without uh, much thinking and longer term thinking horizon, then uh, there would be a little bit of challenge. And we heard, this is not just one case, we have heard there are several, this kind of traditional lakes has been lost. So in the past, people used to say that it was a religious act if they construct this kind of pond in the hilltop, and so that animal can uh, drink water and it will reach out. So they think it is a, a religious act, but now those kind of knowledge system are, are running out. So what we are now trying to do is uh, we will prepare a radio program about this problem. Uh, and then we are going to transmit to this uh, Amark radio station. There are over 300 uh, radio stations. And our uh, intention is that we will continually try to prepare such kind of programs and we establish a model like a how we how communities reduce capacity can be built to prepare a very genuine type of uh, climate change adaptation or locally led adaptation type of programs so that they are because they are directly serving to the community and the community believes them so that way we are thinking that we can uh, not only save this kind of traditional knowledge system but we can basically use as a basis for locally led adaptation so uh, thank you for your kind attention and uh, my apologies for this uh, connection problem. So without wasting any moment, I would like to request uh, Professor Harsit uh, to uh, give her presentation. So let me share her presentation. Uh, yeah. Over to you, Professor Harsit. Thank you so much, Binaya, and I hope uh, I'm audible now. To everyone. Yeah, it's much better, yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being patient with me, all of you. All right. Um, so uh, I'm going to quickly share uh, about our experience uh, in um, with the Mao community. Uh, they are the indigenous people in the Himalayan region. And then uh, the important, like I, I'm an architect and planner. So uh, I was basically exploring this through measure drawing camp with our students there. Uh, from architecture perspective, but I learned a lot about 
the community there. So uh, just to quickly uh, tell about those community, uh, uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, it's in the uh, northeastern part where uh, in uh, Manipur, we have been exploring there for quite some time, documenting their architecture, and then also their uh, planning, like how the entire village settlement is planned. So uh, another slide, please. Thank you. So that, that's the part we're looking at. So if you look at uh, zoom down to Indian context and Manipur, so that's the Kalina, my village, we have been documenting for past couple of years and looking at their lifestyle, culture, and how what their experiences are, what their narratives are. So uh, learning through that, we, we realize that there are a lot of complexity and in this inbuilt lot of innovative techniques with the community's use. Uh, so those are like there, but now it's a little bit with the parallel systems coming in, little in a chaotic situation, but they are all there. And if we identify them, acknowledge them, then there's a lot of potential for streamlining our interventions, what our entire um, our discourse is here today. So moving on to the next slide, please. So uh, this is the... Um, a land use map, which like as a planner, we were trying to understand what the different components there. And you would see that uh, they have so many, like I have never come across so many uses uh, in, in the urban areas, but you would see that they have sacred grove, they have dancing grounds, they have megaliths, they have like uh, traditional water structure, they have community bath. Uh, all these kind of uh, land uh, uses are there. And uh, main important thing is that they help to support the lifestyle and culture of the people. And another important thing is they bring the people together and any, any part of any change when a community goes through, then bringing them together is very, very important, like how they act together, how they think together. So in this village settlement, we see that there's a dancing ground, um, uh, there's like um, megalith uh, or monoliths and a lot of sitting places where people communicate with each other. And then a lot of stones and sculpture through which the narratives are transferred, stories are transferred to the newer generation. Uh, next slide, please, Pana. Yeah, so uh, like uh, these are all the sacred sp spaces which we identified uh, during our camp there. So we see that uh, there was a lot of unbuilt spaces, like unbuilt uh, relationship with the nature. We see the sacred grooves. Then we had like the bright stone, ritual place, honeymoon place. So uh, these kind of places allowed a lot of interaction with nature and it kept them connected. So one problem which is solved by being connected is that you understand what, what is going on, what is changing in the environment. When we are disconnected, uh, we don't even understand that there's something is changing. So the community uh, we saw that was well aware of what's really changing, what's happening, and uh, they understood their nature here. So. Uh, and you, you can see the range of spaces which we found there. So you can see the example of monolith and then the activity open spaces and uh, other um, stick elements where all the celebrations took place. So all these rituals which are already there and most often when we do our camping, we end up documenting very a lot of built structure. We ignore the unbuilt which is there. So how identifying them can also help us to retain uh, the actual uh, core uh, essence of the community. Next, please. So uh, now, like uh, I captured some of the narratives from the community and then the kind of uh, problems they were facing. So uh, like now our friends narrated that there's been food shortage with the growing population and uh, how they are seeing the climate change which is happening there. So they're seeing the deterioration in the quality. Now they are seeing that there's high usage of fertilizers, there's loss of organic food, and then there's change in the nature of the way they 
cult cultivated and then also attitude towards the organic food. And uh, they, they are, they, since they are connected with nature, they have been able to identify those things like less quantity and variety of fish these days and then many birds are missing these days. So that connection is there and they have been able to identify this. Then uh, I also brought narrative from um, Mr. Kaiko here, Pastor, who also told that some of the medicines are available, but now they are also losing the knowledge which was there. And some of the uh, species now they are not even able to find. But these fine understanding um, we could see in this village here. I'll move to next. So uh, again, we see another narrative coming from this place is like uh, also change in the quality of fresh water in the village, how that's happening, high usage of fertilizers, and then how this streams which were there is now no more like really uh, available. And it's like uh, destroyed or their mechanism has been interfered by the new systems which we are creating. And that has led to a lot of deterioration in this place. Move to next, please. So this is the uh, picture of the traditional water system which was there but no more is functional because there was road construction and other things came and then uh, that uh, the traditional water system got destroyed. And then you can see how now the water is being transported through the pipe system. So uh, we, we can see that such kind of changes are happening here and how the entire ecology is getting disturbed here, apart from what is happening at the larger global scale. And move to the next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, so from Sorry, uh, I think uh, we are we are already uh, beyond scheduled time. So if you kindly mm -hmm. finish in a few minutes. Yeah, yes. I'll uh, yeah yeah. Thank you, thank you. I'll I'll just go to next Binaya. So the climate change, what they saw, and then uh, how what are their observations related to springs coming early, and then uh, one important point I would just tell. We'll skip uh, this one also, Binaya. Uh, next, we'll go to the next one. So uh, uh, here, I uh, we also, our team also discovered that there's a, a celebration, Gena, which is like a festival, which is ob observed for like a lot of rituals for landslide control, fire control. Uh, so they uh, have this inbuilt within the community, within their pattern. And then all those folklores are there, which... Um, are there to tell people, create awareness within the traditional systems. So those um, are here, like Gena, which is observed for even fire control, even for earthquake, then they also have for landslide. Uh, and maybe may move to the next slide, please. Yeah. So these are the kind of songs which they sing and narrate and create the awareness. Like the meaning is, oh, tomorrow it is the good fire omen indulge do not indulge in other activities or today. So these kind of uh, songs which are there in the community. So once we start looking at those things, we find these things that inbuilt within the community system, how uh, all these elements of resilience and awareness are there. Yeah, I'll just move to next, yeah. So uh, all these uh, components are there and uh, I'll move to the last one just to wind up. So you can see that how they have been, uh, like there are certain plants, traditionally known plants, which have been also been covered earlier also. So those plants are also there. And then how they are related with their folk songs, their rituals, and how they are integrating it now and reinvesting in, uh, investing, uh, in this neighborhood, in this community. So the main point I wanted to make here is like looking at the complexity, like uh, looking at the uh, complete land use, uh, how there are different elements, and looking at their rituals and other things have helped us to understand uh, these elements, as well as the uh, uh, engaging with the younger students and helping them document has helped us to identify them and also make them uh, acknowledgeable uh, by the community itself. So, uh, 
that's it for now from my side. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you I, so much. Professor Harshit, uh, we have to close our session. And if you have any burning question, please um, raise. We can dedicate one or two minutes for any burning question. If not, uh, please, uh, you can share with us your question remarks later. No problem, we'll look back to you. I would request, uh, uh, I would now, Upper, uh, our Ruda Khan, are you here with us? No. Anyway, so, okay. Let me thank you so much, uh, particularly uh, colleagues from IIED uh, who really extended support for organizing the whole uh, session. Binaya, thank you so much. Professor Harshit, so, and it's thanks pleasure. God you managed very well. And finally, we did it. We made it. Excellent. And uh, Shezar, wonderful session. Thank you so much. And uh, Maria, Katriona, truly we are amazed. Uh, Stefan, for taking, keeping uh, the steering uh, in perfect mood. My colleagues in friendship, IT, communication, climate actions, and others. And please join with us for the next session uh, in to uh, at 16 CET uh, and the session is very interesting climate justice approach to locally led adaptation thank you so much see you again sometime somewhere bye thank you so much thank you really appreciate for all to join this session thank you from IGS bye thank you bye bye thank you thank bye. you thank you